Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to How Baylor On here in Farming Simulator 22 with me Siwadi. It is the start of a lovely new day. We are up to 38% on our uh, sil uh, silage fermenting. Pretty cool. Um, like I say, it is November the 11th in game. It's a new morning. Um, might not have terribly much to do today unless we start doing some contracts and stuff i think we've uh, already got all the vegetables um picked up um we are going to i uh, obviously could not in the last video plant my oil seed radish on my field here so we're just gonna have to leave that field unfortunately until march uh, which is a bit of a shame uh, I'm gonna have a quick, have a quick run in my lovely little New Holland to see if we've got any honey to collect, and hopefully I won't have the same issues with the honey as I have had on uh, my uh, <laughs> uh, on my. Uh, Elm Creek Let's Play series, shall we say, uh, where the uh, the pallets proved rather uh, annoying in that they would often get stuck in the ground and I couldn't pick them up. <laughs> um, and then I spent ages faffing about terraforming and stuff, trying to get them where I wanted them. I can't imagine we've got a lot of honey. One box. Hmm. I think it only lets you spawn one box, doesn't it? Uh, da, da, da. Our tools for the win, baby. I'll put that one on there. I'm going to spawn another box. No? Bees are quite happily done, are you? Range a hundred and fifty meters. Okay, that tells you how much range they've got there. So, if you placed a honey beehive every one hundred and fifty meters, could you effectively cover the whole map in honey bee in bees, and therefore, therefore. Be able to get the yield bonus on every single field. It's a possibility. It's certainly a possibility. But yeah, basically we've uh ooh. Well now uh we've done our little collection trip. We're not gonna get any more stuff today. Uh, I'm gonna go and have a little bit of a trip in a minute. Just to see, test something out. Test something out. Um, I will save before I do it, though. Just in case something goes horribly wrong. Leave that there. Right. Saving content. Oh, the game is saving content. Right. Uh, let's go up to here. Now, normally, I try to avoid this area. Because this is what's uh, affectionately known as, for me, as Crash Central. This is where I always get a game crash, especially as we start heading towards the spinnery. I just want to see if my game's going to crash today.
It does. It has. Okay. I'll need to fix that. Okay. Back in game, folks. And look at this. I'm making progress, folks. Oh, oh. This is the closest I've got to the spinnery the whole time I've been playing this game. I'm here. It's not crashed. It has not crashed. Um, you might be wondering, okay, how have you managed to fix that then? Um, well, my um, view distance and foliage distance um, were set at 350%. I've turned them down to 250%. And as a result, the game is not crashing. I've just basically had to dial my settings back, reduce my graphic settings. And as a result, I can get to this area. And it doesn't crash. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I can get to this area and not crash. <sighs> Fantastic. Right, you know what we're going to do next? We're going to head um, down here. Because there is a collectible for me to pick up in this area, which I've never been able to get to before. Which will give me a nice bit of money. Which will give me, you know, 50 grand extra. So if I head down here. Where this lovely catapult is. And right here inside the catapult. Is the collectible. And that leaves me with just five more to collect. Uh, I've no idea where they are though. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not crashing. Um, as long as I keep my view distance turned down. Um, I don't crash. The only negative I can see that I get in game from turning down my view distance is that when I'm on a field that's been ploughed or cultivated or whatever um, you can't see the rocks um, you can't see the rocks on the field you know the um, the, the stones can't see them someone's left a duffel bag there So I don't know where the other five collectibles are. I'm going to have to have a, a bit of a look. Maybe have a bit of a reference check. I, I know where I have been. Um, on the map. I know where I have been and searched. Um, and picked up items. So it won't take me too long to deduce from that one. Turbo Arcade. Oh, that is not, sadly. Thought it might have been, but it's not. I must have... There must have been a cartridge laying on one of the machines. On one of those... Um... Arcade machines. And that's what made me think that the arcade machines were the collectible originally. In the series. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely November morning. We are in winter, unfortunately. Um, not a lot to do at this point. Um, let's have a look. Contracts. 
contracts. Couple of bailing contracts. Cultivating contracts. Done a fair bit of cultivating recently. A fertilizing contract. They they pay quite nicely to be fair. Forty three. That's quite close to us actually. Build forty three fertilizing. Except. Maybe 15, field 4, come back to field, maybe possibly do field 18 later. Right, let's have a think, let's take this tractor, let's grab my spreader. Probably at some point in time need to uh, get a pressure washer. So I can start washing some of my vehicles. But not today. Not today. Let's see. Have we got enough fertilizer in our fertilizer spreader? Or have we got lime in it? We've got fertilizer. Don't know why I keep saying it like that. Um, those are all pallets of lime. Right, let's have a look then. Field 43 on the map is... Uh, the big one with cotton. So let's go do some line, uh, fertilizer spreading. Earned a little bit of money today. Why not? Um, every little helps. I don't have access to this land. Oh, I did. Oh, have all those contracts disappeared? They have. Ah, that's why then they've shafted me. Those contracts have expired. Well, in that case, um... In that case, we won't do fertilizing then, will we? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, winter strikes. <clears throat> winter strikes.
Okay, here we are. Late November now. Um, some more produce. Tomatoes. Load up the trailer. Our, our, our tomatoes. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to sell these. Um, we will have a look as well, because I know we've got some stuff in our silo that we could do with selling. Wouldn't we? Um, sorghum. Things like that. Corn. I think we've got corn in there as well. If that is ready to sell at this point in time. Box of lettuces. Box of lettuces. More tomatoes. Doubt we'll have any more honey. I think the bees are in um bees are in hibernation now for the winter. Oh crikey. Uh oh. Where have I just launched that pallet? <laughs> Palletphysics.com. It's because I keep climbing onto the trailer for some reason. I'll do. So it's near enough. Close enough. Close enough for a muck spreader, as they say. <laughs> and people, and I, and to think, I choose to do it with this method because um, I'm terrified that if I tried doing it with the forks, I would make a mess. <laughs> With the dodgy pallet physics. Um, might need to put some more water in that soon. Have a quick head over to the the bees. I think the bees are in hibernation. I don't think they're making us any honey. Point. Oh no, there is a pallet there. Pallet. Can't pick up. Hmm. Not without me pallet forks anyway. Right then. Let's have a look again then, see what contracts are available now at this point in November. Still all the same. Pretty much. I think I'm just going to be skipping ahead, folks. I think I'm just going to skip ahead. Uh, let's check. Prices. Sunflowers. Nope. Prices are absolutely dire. Sunflowers. Soybeans. Prices are dire. Corn. Prices are dire. Won't be selling any of that then. I 
Okay, I've skipped ahead into December, currently, of the save, and I'm currently having a bit of a play around. Um, currently still looking for collectibles. I thought I had all the collectibles. Uh, did I get the one in this area? No, I missed one. Ah, you see. There was one up here at the spinnery. There was another one. Right. That's another collectible ticked off the list then. Now, next one I think we have to get to is... Um, because basically there's, there's not a whole lot. Right, yes. Uh, let's head down... Let's head down this way. See if we can't find one somewhere in here. I could have sworn I've looked in this area, but I could have overlooked it. Um, There's one. Agri Pinball DX. Got it. Right. Three more to go then. Right, let's have a look. Not been up to the observatory. Yeah. Probably going to be one up here, I would have thought, somewhere. There we are. It's that one. Get off my field. Right, two more to go. Two more collectibles to find. Do, do, do. Right. I think I know where the next one is. Uh, need to come down south. Basically, we're just going to head for this road down here. Till we find a broken bit of wall. Ah. Um, I've sent my AI helper off. Um, he was, I, I did just sell my lettuces and tomatoes and things. Um. Ain't going. Probably around here, I think. 
worth having a lot. Forage. Jump all over the guy's house. Check. And in there. I'm in a hunt round. Don't mind me, whoever lives here. I'm not robbing your house. Looking for the uh, collectibles. Question how do I get back out? Look round the back. Aha, there's one. See it. Quick look on the rest of the roof. There we go. We can drop down there. There. Vertical farming. Right, one more to go then. One more to find. Uh, where am I going to find that? Uh, and if you didn't already know, there's a l neat little trick you can do with these collectibles. Once you've got hold of them. Um, and we will go and find that in a second. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Field 14 we want to head to. So it's going to be somewhere in here. Um... It'll be somewhere in this forestry area. Is it going to be around here? There it is. Past your sovereign. Congratulations, you found all the cartridges. I found all the collectibles. I found all the collectibles. Right. Travel back to my farm now. My trailer's back. But yeah, if you come into your garage. Da, 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 da. There's your console. And if you click the left uh, stick, you can scroll through all the different cartridges that you found. You can't actually play any games. They're not real games. You can't play them. But um, you can change your uh, what's on the, the TV here. Ah, cool. I'm going to leave it on the golf one. Oh, I am. Right, we've got 368,000 in the bank now. I feel a little bit richer. Um, that land is 605,000. However, I can't buy that land. What about that land? That's 146. And that was sugar beet. Uh, I tell you what, we could do then. We could buy that for 146,000. I can then get to ploughing that and get to cultivating that. And that will be. A winter project then we'll have another field ready for seeding come spring and now i own all the land down here uh it's over this way isn't it it's this one all these withered sugar beets 
So I could give me Cultivator out. We could come Cultivating. And, um... Get this field fertilised. Um... Again then, and then we'll be ready for seeding come the springtime. That could be a project to do today. There's also another thing I want to do. I want to add to my little classic tractor collection. Um, I've got this now unlocked. Thanks to um, um, Jax, Farmer Jax, who um, sent me the, uh, the code to uh, unlock the Porsche Diesel Junior Tractor in the game. Um, we've uh, we got the unlockable for that. <laughs> You got the code. There's a couple of other codes as well that I think I've got um, some... I've got a, a different hat. I, I could choose to have a different hat. Um, some different trousers. Uh, and um, a shirt as well. All the other unlocks I already had, like the, um, the Z-Tor tractor, the Black Beauty, uh, the Mac Black Truck. And some of the other unlocks I already have because obviously I bought the um, game through Giants. So Giants, um, if you bought the game through Giants with the season pass that bought their like year one bundle, you got all the unlock codes anyway. But you didn't get the unlock code for this tractor, which I think you only get if you bought a Rexel model kit, plastic like Airfix model kit type thing of this tractor inside the box for the model kit tractor you then find a code um which you can use to unlock this on um in your game and um yeah uh jacks sent me a link show me where to find the unlock code i guess the unlock code is the same it's one code that's universal for the game um But yeah, we've got our uh, we've got our Zetor here, and now we've got our little Porsche Diesel. They're absolutely useless for doing any kind of work. Just 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 should probably mention that. <laughs> um, because they don't have a lot of horsepower. Neither of them really um, have a lot of horsepower. Um, yeah, what do they have actually? Uh, the Zetor's got 25. <laughs> and the Junior has 14. So yeah, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to be harvesting anything with those. <laughs> plowing anything, cultivating anything. Um, I've got my little voucher set up here because obviously I'm putting water into the uh, into the old greenhouses, keeping them up and running. Currently, like I say, I've just been sold a load of tomatoes and lettuces, uh, and my honey. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to park this over here. Thing, because um, the honey will probably want picking up next. I've also managed to do a bit of terraforming over here, thanks to the newly released Place Anywhere mod and the um, Paint Terrain Anywhere mod. So just over here, I've managed to actually lower the ground sufficiently. That when I bring the water tanker over here, I can I can back the water tanker into that area there, and um, we get um, we get uh, uh, we can fill the water tanker for free. I'm not having to spend money. I'm not on um, buying water for my greenhouse. I can fill up from here for free. 
because we've I've managed to make the ground slope a bit more. I mean, I could, I could, I could still do a little bit more on that. I could just slope that out a little bit more, make it even gentler. Um, but that was about the only place I could actually get in where the game would actually let me go in, even with the mods added and um, be able to um, level out the terrain and smooth out the terrain. It wouldn't let me do any around here or um, on the on the far side of the bank there. It wouldn't let me lower any of the terrain or smooth any of that terrain out, even with the mods installed. Um, so, yeah, couldn't, couldn't really do a lot with that. Um, so I had to pick the one spot where I can. It's a little bit of a drive from the farm, obviously, over there. Fill up with water when the greenhouses need water, but you know, if it's free, it's worth the trip. <laughs> if it saves me having to buy it from the um, um, the water tank and pay money for it, then kind of worth doing. But yeah, we're here, we're here in December, folks, and we've not had any snow yet. Oh yeah, we'll do some cultivationing. Work these sugar. I didn't think that. I didn't think the farmer would harvest the sugar beets. I didn't. I didn't think the farmer would harvest the field. It's the one thing I've noticed in FS22 so far. I don't think any of the farmers have harvested their own fields, unless I've done it for a contract. The contract, the fields have all been left to wither. The farmers don't harvest their own fields. I could be wrong, but certainly in my save so far, no farmer has harvested their own field. So I'm like, okay. Fair enough. Happy days. So as it's December, we ought to be getting ready to um, sell some stuff, I think. Potentially, again, if we go back and look at the price screen. Uh, sunflowers, nope. Soybeans, a little bit up. Marasoni has actually got pretty decent um, prices. Corn, corn is going up in price. We might want to be selling our corn. I figure if we sell the corn and um, soybeans, I should be able to pay off my loan that I took um, to um, recover the cost of my failed landscaping efforts <laughs> over on my soybean field. Remember, a couple of episodes back, I tried to level out and smooth out the, the terrain a bit more. Because I plan to um, extend that field. Um, yeah, didn't really work, did it? I ended up burning through all the money I had made. But the good thing is, we found all the collectibles on the map, so I've got loads of free money. <laughs> I've got loads of money for free for not having to do much more than uh, go walk the map and pick up a few bits and pieces. Wasn't too bad on this map, because there's only, like I say, on this map, there's only the 20 collectibles. I know on Elm Creek, there's I think there's a hundred collectibles. Um, I haven't found very many of those yet. Um, but to be fair, I'm not really looking for them on Elm Creek. If, unless they absolutely jump out and smack me in the face. 
I'm not really sort of looking for them and hunting for them on Elm Creek. Uh, I've not found any of the Pac-Man things on um, Erlengrat either. Um, again, because of the way I'm playing the Erlengrat map at the moment, I'm not really exploring the map. I'm too busy working on my own farm and, and creating my fields that I'm going to then need to get seeded and put my grass in. Big grass operation. Big mowing operation and then lots of cow pens doing massive like um dairy farming and stuff is my plan for earl and grat i'm trying to do things differently on each each of the maps basically is what i'm saying um hence why on elm creek i've done a start from scratch where we started out building our own farm, chopping down some trees, um, and just generally redesigning my starting farm area, redesigning my fields, reshaping them, resizing them. Um, it does make each map a different play through and different play style. Obviously, once we start getting mod maps coming out, then that'll be completely different then, because then we can play... Everybody will be able to do different stuff then. Because, obviously, at the minute, we're limited to, obviously, free maps, which means all as creators, all as content creators, are kind of stuck doing similar things to one another, because we've got such limited maps to play on. Um, but, obviously, once mod maps start coming out... Um, and you've got more variety of what maps to play on, then you can start being diversifying a bit. And like I say, when some of the when some of the other content creators, the bigger content creators, all rush off to do a mod map that releases, um, I can pick another map that maybe is less well known, um, and I can do a series on that, which will then offer people something completely different to watch. You know. Again, that's one of the reasons why I like Stevie maps, because most of the um, mod, uh, content creators don't cover Stevie maps. Because basically, if it doesn't release on the if the if 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 the maps aren't released on the mod hub, they don't play them. And obviously, if they don't release on consoles, they don't play them. Um, so you know, if if Stevie releases a map, I have no fears that like Mr. Sealy P is going to play it, because Mr. Sealy P on PlayStation is not going to be able to download and play a Stevie map. And um, the other content create the other big content creators that do Let's Play series, um, they're going to stick to playing mod -up maps because um, you know they get that they get that little bit of a kickback um, and reward for doing so. Whereas I don't, so I'm not obligated. I'm not contractually obligated to play any specific maps or any specific mods. That's one of the things I enjoy. With my partner statorship, is that I get to do what I want with the game. <laughs> I don't have to follow any script or any plan. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have to get my content approved before it's posted. Um, I'm free to do what I want. <laughs> and I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that flexibility. Like I say, I can play with whatever mobs I want. I can play on whatever maps I like. That's all good. That's all good. So yeah, well, I'm going to get this field cultivated. I'm then probably going to fertilise it. Um, and then... That'll probably be it. <laughs> uh, till the next episode. Um, like I say, the only thing I can see me doing, really, over the next over the for the rest of december and january we'll be selling um we'll be selling my fruit and vegetables <laughs> that are coming out of my greenhouse and my honey um selling me corn and me soybean well not my soybeans because i don't think soybeans sell till about july time is it um i don't know if some flowers are worth selling January time 
but it really could be a case of um, I bring you guys back a little bit later in the series. I might play ahead now, um, unless I get snow, and I might show you guys snow, um, and, and doing a bit of snow shoveling and a bit of salt spreading. Um, I, I, I might bring you back and do an episode on that, but it might be a case of we come back first day of March when the um, planting um, planting and seeding season opens up and we can get this field, our, our soybean field, the field we harvested the soybeans off and then the field that I've got the oilseed radish on, I can get those um, seeded, planted and um, and then we'll have the the wheat we'll have all, the crops here we'll want um, harvesting so our, our, our wheat, our barley, our canola that'll all want harvesting um, that'll give us some more straw and stuff which we can sell once we've got some wheat and barley, then that opens the door for me to start thinking maybe about adding in some animals. Um, we could start with chickens, because obviously they eat wheat and barley. Um, so that's an avenue we could go down. We could get a chicken pen somewhere placed. Uh, a bit of, I think there's a bit of room. A little bit of room down here, actually, next to this field where we, we might go and... Uh, put a chicken pen then we can start getting eggs uh, and then we ought to probably think next year about which of the actual production buildings on the map we want to start maybe sort of breaking into where do we want to start with our productions are we going to go down the um, bread road? Bread baking? Bakery? In which case we probably need to get ourselves the grain mill. So we can get flour. One of the things I haven't looked at yet is the actual um, cell points that we can place. In the additional cell points that we can put on the map ourselves. Um, which can give us some extra places to sell some stuff. So well, I can have a look at that. I mean, basically, we're talking selling points. So things like Debris Crusher, fast food restaurant, biomass, supermarket, restaurant, pizzeria, farmer's market. We have our own little... Farm shop, you know, diddly squat farm shop, eh? How about that? Like Jeremy Clark's, and we could sell our own stuff. I don't think we have any candles that smell like my bollocks. <laughs> no, like um, Jeremy Clarkson. Remember, <laughs> he does he does candles out of his um. His bees. He takes the wax from the bees and he uses that to make his own scented candles. And he's got one candle there that's called um, Smells Like My... You know. I wonder. I, I'm partly intrigued. I would like to know what that is actually like. I'd like to get one of those just for um, science reasons. <laughs> I think he's, he's got a couple of Christmas ones as well, hasn't he? At the moment on his farm shop website you can buy. 
There's a candle that smells like his Christmas balls. And there's another one that smells like his Christmas log, I think it says. I need to go. I need to go and visit his shop. It's not terribly far from where I live. It's only like a two-hour drive. Um, but obviously, it's getting wintry now. It's a bit cold to go there and hang around outside with all the social distancing COVID stuff. Might have been better to have gone in the summer. Um, but then again, it was ram-packed in the summer. Lots of people were going there because of the popularity of the show. You definitely want to go when kids are at school, I think, during school ter school term. Um, then you've got less people there. But I think I'm going to leave that episode here, folks, for today. Um, we've bought some more land because we found all collectibles. Um, we've got that field cultivated. I'm just going to carry on skipping ahead day by day, seeing what happens. But like I say, I can't imagine we're going to be doing too, doing too much apart from maybe selling a few crops over the next few days and uh, the next few months until that planting window comes up again. Um, so we can get fields like this seeded and our, our field over there seeded. Um, there's just not a lot I can do in the winter currently in year one because we don't have all the other fancy stuff uh, available to us yet. We've not got buildings, we've not got production chains and stuff like that set up. So year one winter is a bit of a uh, fun twiddling time, but we will fix that as we add more stuff to our farm in year two. We will fix that. So thank you for watching today's video, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please go ahead and click that like button for me. Remember to subscribe to the channel and enable your notification bell if you're not currently doing so. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. Share the video everywhere you see fit with whoever you see fit. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And um, I'll see you all again very soon. Here we go for now.